6th November 2022, Joseph Teaches Life, Part 5, by Pastor Simon James. Greetings in the name of Jesus and welcome to Riverside Tabernacle. I'm Pastor Simon and it's my honor to share God's word with you this morning. We trust you will find this message inspiring and uplifting. And may you be receptive to the voice of the Blessed Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity this privilege to sit at your feet today. Thank you, Lord, that you are using me as your oracle this morning, as your speaker, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have afforded your daughter and myself, that we can speak your word to your children. We pray for your children, wherever they are, whether they're listening live or will listen later, that, Lord, they will be blessed by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Once more, good morning and welcome to Riverside Tabernacle. Today we continue in our series, Joseph Teaches Life. And it's part five. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the book of Genesis. We're still on chapter 37 and I'm reading two verses today, 23 and 24. Verse 23 says, So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe the robe of many colors that he wore. And they took him and threw him into a pit. The pit was empty. There was no water in it. Along the dusty pathways across the blazing heat of the desert, a lonely figure moved, stopping periodically and then moving again, as if to catch its breath. The figure was a welcome burst of color against the drab countryside, interspersed with bits of brownish green where hardy grass struggled to grow. The young man thought over the recent happenings, his dreams, and the ugly reception from his family. His father was not really upset, he noticed, but his brother's reactions were, were discouraging. He wondered how they might receive him now. Still, he expected a warm reception. After all, they were family. His brothers recognized him from a long way off. The multicolored was a Multicolored coat was a dead giveaway. Here comes his dreamer, one said. Another said, let's kill him. As each gave his accent to the idea, Reuben, the eldest, said, no, don't shed his blood. Throw him in that pit. He aimed to rescue him later. As soon as Joseph reached their camp, he realized that he was wrong about his reception. He had never seen such anger before in their eyes. Before he had time to react, his coat was torn off him and his hands and feet bound. Two of them carried him to the pit and unceremoniously threw him in. Propping himself against the wall of the pit, he sat, sobbing quietly. His protest fell on deaf ears. He knew it was just a matter of time before they came to finish him off. Why, Lord? Please save me. The voices of his brothers and voices speaking in a foreign tongue wafted down into his pit and roused him from his prayer. And then he realized because of the sound that it seemed like some kind of negotiation was going on. And then all of a sudden rough hands lifted him up out of the pit. The rope binding his feet was cut. A longer rope was tied to his hands and the other to the end of a camel, the other end to a camel. Then realization hit him. He was being sold to foreigners as a slave. He looked at his smiling brothers. Tears welled up as the caravan began moving. That was the captive. Dealing with loss. Today I want to talk to you about loss and dealing with loss. And then I want to move on to perseverance. These are the two leadership traits that I want to speak about today. Two, today. These are the two traits that you as a Christian or even as a human being ought to have. And even if you do not believe in Jesus, you do not believe in this word of God, you can learn from this. It's good leadership training. Young Joseph had lost more than men twice his age had lost. His first loss was his family. When he spoke truthfully 
to his father about what his brothers did, about their misdeeds. He lost the love of his brothers. He lost the admiration of, the, of his brothers. They became his mortal enemies. You see, his truthfulness, his dad's favor, and his prophetic dreams cost him the love of his siblings. He was truthful. He said to his father what they'd done. His father favored him because he was a child who showed that he cared for the things that belonged to his father. He cared for family. And then on top of that, he had the two, two prophetic dreams I spoke to you about last week. And you can read it in, in Genesis uh, 37. Now these prophetic dreams were, were messages from God signifying a future time when he would rule over his family. And this cost him the love of his siblings and it brought him intense hatred from his brothers. It made him lonely. He was alone. He had no friends. I'm sure Benjamin was too little to be his friend, but he was very lonely. His brothers wouldn't have time for him. He learned that love is not always returned and those destined for greatness are seldom loved. He learned that love is not always returned and those that are destined for greatness are seldom loved. Talk about those people who have made it to the top, whether it's political, whether it's in other leadership, churches, organizations, even sometimes in the family itself. They are lonely. It's lonely at the top, they say. The much loved coat that signified his favor with his father was rudely stripped off him when his brothers found him. It meant so much to him. It was his connection to his beloved father. It was his identity as the favored son. It was his dignity. But his evil brothers had taken it away from him in one fell swoop. He had nothing anymore to connect him to Jacob. He had nothing anymore to tell him who he was. He had lost his identity. And worse still, he had died in his father's eyes because that coat was presented to his father after being dipped in the blood of a, of a lamb or a goat and handed to his father and, and told, your son is dead. And I want you to think about this blood and the coat and think about how the Lord Jesus died for you and how the Lord Jesus came to life after three days. And in Joseph's case, it was a few years and then Joseph was found to be still alive. So he was a forerunner of Jesus. Whereas in his father's house, Joseph was waited on by servants. In Egypt, he was the servant. At his father's house, he could ask for something and somebody would cook it for him. His father was very rich. He had many servants. But now in Egypt, he became the servant to, in Potiphar's house. Jesus said in Matthew 20, verse 20, 26 and 27, Who would be great among you must be your servant. Who would be first among you must be your slave. This is a great lesson in leadership. Servanthood is a training ground for leadership. If you want to be able to be, you, if you want to be the leader, you must be able to serve. Tell me, who cleans the toilets at church. Who is it that cleans the toilet for church? Those are the people that should be made the leaders of the church. Because it is those people who care. It is those people who find the time to do the mundane things, the menial tasks. Do you know why? They have a heart of a servant. And if you want to serve God, you need to have a heart of a servant. If you want to be truly a good leader, you must have the heart of a servant. If you look at if you look, if you if you study, uh, 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 what is that? Uh, Disney World. In Disney World, everybody gets a chance. Everybody, from the lowest person to the. Just give me a. Uh, sorry about that. Yes, uh, I had a call coming through and it messed up my... Uh... Okay. Yes, I was talking to you about 
uh, about uh, Disneyland. In Disneyland, in Disneyland, the, the chief executive, once a month, for a whole day, he becomes a cleaner. He walks around Disneyland picking up chewing gum that has been spat out. He picks up pieces of paper that has been uh, thrown onto the ground, wrappers of sweets, etc. And he carries on and he goes on even to the extent of cleaning the toilets. Do you know why they do that? So that he learns and he understands what it is to be a lowly servant of Disneyland. Okay. Now Jesus tells us the same thing. Who would be great must be the servant and who, must be, who would be first must be your slave. Joseph's apparent loss of social standing was actually God's preparation to serve him. A high calling indeed. When dealing with loss, one must hold on to one's values or lose one's soul. If Joseph needed love, it was not the kind of love that Potiphar's wife offered. But I want to go back to when dealing with loss, one must hold on to your soul. If you lose your values, you lose your soul. Values are those things that when you are stripped of everything, when, you're, when your clothes are taken off, when your cell phone is taken away, when your Bible is gone, when everything is gone, what is it that's left to you? It's your integrity. It's your knowledge of the Word of God. It's your love for God, your devotion to God. That is uh, those are your values and if you lose your values you've lost your soul because your values are imprinted upon your soul now Joseph was lonely he was loveless and then Potiphar's wife decided to offer him her love but he rejected her love because her love was lust and rejecting her love resulted in him losing his coat losing his coat a second time the first time he had built himself up from a, from a child in the house to be the first child, the, father, the father's beloved child. And then his coat was taken away and he suffered that loss of dignity. Now again in Potiphar's house he worked himself from the lowest slave until he was the chief of the Potiphar's house. And again the devil sent his people in and took away his dignity took away his integrity. Well, they thought they did, but they didn't. You can take away, you can uncover a man's nakedness, but you cannot take away his integrity. Once again, he lost his covering, but he held on to his dignity. In all this, he held on to the Lord. Joseph was captured. He was sold. He was imprisoned. He was physically and bound, but spiritually free. Hallelujah. Praise God for that. Physically bound, but spiritually he was free. He never ceased to pray, nor was he disloyal to his God. He accepted the role of a prophet in exile. He became a prophet in exile. He would not have become a prophet had he not allowed himself to go through the things that God wanted him to go. He delivered the messages from God to his fellow prisoners truthfully, without error. He could have refused. He could have refused. But he was faithful. He could have said, you know what? I'm in this prison. I didn't ask to be here. God put me here, but I don't need to do anything. These people have dreams. So what? So why must I tell them what their dreams mean? How many times you could be sitting at a, at a station or, a, or a waiting, in a waiting room in a hospital or somewhere. And there's somebody near you and the Holy Spirit is prompting you. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them that Jesus loves you. And you wonder, no, I'm here to, I'm here only for the checkup, why must I waste my time talking to this person? Why must I ask, tell, ask them if they know the Lord? Let me just sit here. Joseph could have done that, but he didn't do that. He was faithful to God. You see, Joseph was lost in Egypt. He knew nobody in that country except those he served and those he served with. So the only people that he knew in Egypt and those were foreigners to him were those slaves that were, I mean, those that were fellow slaves. And then he knew his master, his master's wives. A wife and whoever was above him. He might have known the, the grocer. He might have known the baker. But he wasn't known in that place. But he lost all that knowledge of, uh, of people that he loved. He was also in a place that had no love for him. No one there really loved him. And he was lost. But he was lost in the love of God. He abandoned 
or he was abandoned by those he loved. So he abandoned himself to the one who loved him. He was abandoned by his brothers who he loved. And so he abandoned himself to the one who loved him, who is God. And he learned to lean on God. I want to talk to you about perseverance now. Perseverance is perhaps the most difficult trait to cultivate. Because it goes with impatience. I mean, lack of, of uh, perseverance it goes along with impatience. Pe perseverance is not allowing your back to break even after the millionth straw. You know, they say the last straw breaks the camel's back. But when you persevere, even that must not break your back. Those who keep on keeping on are those who finish strongly. If you keep on keeping on, you are persevering. Joseph could have thrown in the towel a million times, but he kept on keeping on. When his brothers hated him, he still loved them. He still was faithful to his father. He still went to see how his brothers were doing. He, he wanted, he shared his father's concern for his brother's welfare. If it was me, I would have said to my dad, no, they don't care about me. I'm not going. I'd rather be happy at home. Why must I walk on those dusty roads through the wilderness where there are wolves and where there may be bears and lions and, and bandits and marauders? Why must I do that? Let me stay at home. But he kept on going. When his brothers threw him in the pit, he stayed there. He cried. He might have cried. He might have begged for his life. And then they sold him, but he didn't give up and die. He could have killed himself a hundred times, but he didn't. He kept on keeping on, knowing that there was an end to this. It was not hope that drove him on. He wasn't having false hope that one day things will be all right. Nor faith in himself, but a knowledge that his God had good reason to bring him out of Canaan into Egypt. You see, it's not our hope that drives us on. It's our hope in God that drives us on. It's not our faith in ourselves that drives us on. It's our faith in God that keeps us going. It's now knowledge that our God is a good God and our God has good plans for us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. A plans that will end in what he wants us to be. And he knew that if God dropped him into the valley, the same God would lift him up out of the valley and place him on the mountain someday. He knew that all things would work out as the Lord planned for him. When his brothers threw him into the pit, he held on to this belief. He held on to the belief that this is of God. God, my life is in God. My life is in the hands of Jehovah. When he was a slave in Egypt, he remembered this. He remembered that he was a child of the living God. He might have remembered the promise that God had made to Abraham, to Isaac and Jacob, his father. Jacob must have told him about it. And when he was imprisoned, he believed. When he was in, in prison, he believed that God would rescue him. He trusted God's timing. He trusted God above all. The act of perseverance is linked to the belief that all situations are temporary seasons that will pass away soon. The time that you are going through right now, that time in the valley will soon pass. If you keep moving forward out of the valley, you can only go up. You cannot go deeper than the valley. And if you're on the mountain, know that there will be times when you walk into the valley. But there'll be times again when you walk out of the valley. There'll be times when you have to cross over hurdles and rivers. When you sometimes you need the Lord to part your Jordan and sometimes you need him to part your Red Sea. But you know that he will do it for you. Persistence is doing something despite the difficulty or the delay in achieving success. That is what persistence is. Perse uh, per perseverance is and pers uh, persistence. Perseverance is based on faith that God is in control of the future. Perseverance is doing whatever you're supposed to do despite the delay in achieving the successful full outcome that you're waiting for. Even though G Joseph could not see the end of his life, he could not see the end from the beginning. He knew that his dreams were not his ambitions, but they were God's plans. 
He knew that the dreams that he received were from God. They were not something that he dreamed about himself and thought, I want to be above my brothers. It was God's plans, just God's messages, and God's plans always come to pass. If God says it, that settles it. When David, King David, was in the pasture composing psalms of praise, listening to the bleeding of the sheep, listening out for the cries of wolves and bears, suffering in the stench of dung, he could never have seen that he would be Israel's greatest king in a few years' time. All he saw was the pasture and the sheep. But the Lord his God knew his future. When Moses grew up in the house of Pharaoh, he never dreamed that one day he would speak to God face to face. He never dreamed that one day he would stand behind a burning bush, a bush that was burning but did not burn up because God's presence was there. He never knew that one day he'd climb up Mount Sinai and meet God and receive the Ten Commandments written on tablets of stone. He did not know that one day he would reflect the brilliance of his father when he came down from the mountain. Elijah was ready to give it all up in the wilderness, not knowing that he was chosen to hear the audible voice of God in 40 days and 40 nights. You see, those who give up their lives or give the, give, uh, those who give up, give, up their, 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 give up their visions too early or give up on God too early, live their lives wandering in the wilderness. You remember the, 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 the Israelites, they gave up on what God had told them. God had told them through his servant Moses, I will take you into a land filled with milk and honey. And that land is Israel. And right now they call Israel the land of milk and honey. But these people couldn't wait for God, to, to God's time. And they grumbled at Moses and they groused. And when, God sent, uh, when Moses sent spies into the land, he sent 12 spies. 10 came back and said, whoa, it's a bad place. Oh, we can't go there. But Caleb and, uh, Caleb and Joshua said, if the Lord gives us, if we go in the name of the Lord, we can take this. We do not have, we are not afraid of giants. And God was upset with these people who didn't have faith in him. And he made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years. And they all died in the wilderness. Except for Joshua and Caleb. If Paul did not persevere, despite all the things that went through his life, he, if he did not persevere, we might not have known, some of us might not have known Christianity and Jesus today. If Paul did not persevere after he fell off his horse, he would have died a blind man, but he persevered and he listened to God and the scales were taken off his eyes. So many people live their lives without seeing the Lord's favor because there's none so blind as those who will not see. As I close today, I want to tell you that God's choice is the right choice. You may be living your life right now thinking that is what God wants you to do. But you have no idea, idea what God really wants you to do. But when God chooses you, your road is long, it's dangerous, it's narrow, it's lonely, it's fraught with dangers. There are traps all over. Satan is always at your heel. He's always around. He's, he's uh, roaring at you. He's trying to put thoughts in your ideas. He's always throwing his people in front of you to disturb you. Satan will never leave you alone if God's favor is upon you. Joseph was a person who had God's favor on him. And in all those times that he had God's favor, Satan was trying to bring him down. Satan used his brothers against him. Satan used the Midianites against him. Satan used Potiphar's wife against him. But in the end, God raised him up. And today I want to tell you that if you are a child of God who has been called to the ministry. Listen, we all are called to the ministry. But sometimes some of us are called to specific servanthood in the body of Christ to lead as a servant. The servant leader. Some of us are called to... Well, most of us are called to be personal evangelists. Wherever you call, do it. 
those that are received much, uh, exp- uh, those to those who God gives much, He expects much from them. So sometimes when you're going through difficult times, don't you believe that God has abandoned you? Don't you believe that you have done something wrong? If you've examined your lives you're, and you can see that there's nothing wrong in your life, that you are honoring God, then keep on keeping on. Because at the end of the day, God will raise you up. God took Moses from the basket into the palace, from the palace into the pasture, from the pasture into Pharaoh's court. And then he took him to the mountain where he took him home. God took David from the pasture to the palace. He took Joseph from the pit to Pharaoh's palace to becoming prime minister of Egypt. God can do it for you. God has done it before. He can do it for you. I trust you've enjoyed God's word today and it's been a blessing to you. If you're inspired by it, please share it with friends and family. Remember, we live on Facebook every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and uh, Sundays at 10 a.m. This is Pastor Simon and as always, God bless you.